Yo guys, and welcome back to the warehouse. Uh, this time frame might be messed up because you know we bought all three of these vehicles, but we got to get the boat out first, and it's not quite winter yet. So we're gonna we're gonna dive in here. Uh, this vintage Caravel Caravel. I don't know. It's pretty neat though. Uh, didn't look it over much. It's got an old Mer Cruiser. It looks like. Yep. Skag's a little chipped up. Kind of just, you know, going in. This this is the intro, guys. Uh, see, this one's broken. I'm just starting with the uh, the walk around tour so you guys can see the condition. It seems to be uh, in very nice original condition from what I can tell. Oh, look at that interior. Let's let's finish the outside. Oh, last registered 1993. Doesn't mean that was the last time it ran, but. Judging by what I'm seeing, that could very well be the case. It's hard to tell when something's stored indoors, you know. I mean, but it's, this thing's not covered in dust. And, uh, what has he got? Some PVC in there or something? The trailer's in really nice condition. You can see this keel has taken a few hits, but that's completely normal. It's actually got some glass on it as well. So we put resin on there to probably prevent anything from getting soaked in. It's a roller trailer. I do prefer bunk trailers because, you know, if you leave these sit on there, they put like little indentations in the boat over time. And that's, that's not cool. But, uh, let's, here's a look up at the bow. Also, there's a cuddy, huh? Small, small cuddy cabin. Let's scoot around the other side and we can see looking pretty good. No holes so far, so that's a good sign. It's been bottom painted. And yeah, I think that's all you need to see over here. Now this is, does have the marker lights or the, the navigation lights on each side, which you know you see usually just the, the one right up front. That's a high-end boat indicator, right? For all I know, this thing's like a, a Cadillac of boats. I don't know. I'm seeing. I don't know anything about it. And I do apologize for this poor lighting. If I didn't already say that, I'm hoping this light in my hand doesn't die. But let's go ahead and jump in. Lots of fishing gear coming with it. You got the old pal. And we have a bimini. Some vintage green seats that look to be, well, original to either the boat or whoever last restored it, which seems to be 70s uh, based on what I'm seeing. I, mean, I can't even get up in here. Let's see if the steering's free. Oh, yeah, that's sitting on the ground. Okay, that's right. Shift cable. Mm. Yeah, that seems tight. I love what we're looking here at the dash. Hopefully I'm not washing it out with this light. But uh, the old school trim button. And a fish finder. And a port body. And I guess I wouldn't call it much of a cutty cabin because I had to does anybody get up there? No, I mean, a little child could crawl past there, but that's about it. This is mostly for opening the front window and then folding that up. Okay. And just coming up here and dropping your anchor. But the, the deck, you know, is sturdy. It's very sturdy, actually. Some, sometimes you get up on these and they're like really flexible. Okay, this one, this one's a little flexible. It's not as heavy duty as like the the Sea Ray 215 Express Cruiser that we had, uh, but definitely a unique one. I, I've never seen this boat, but I'm not a boat guru. I know some of you guys hate the boat videos too. Oh, enough with the boats. Get on the cars. Get back on the cars. Well, I can't do the cars until I do the boat. The boat comes with the deal. Like, I mean, that was the, the big motivator. Is like they want this boat out of here. Well, what do we got for a motor? That's a, that's a long hood. Do we have an engine? Oh, uh, all right. So it's a big inline six. It looks to be all complete. Yeah, there's a trim pump. Oh, got the frame filter. This thing looks like we'll just throw some fuel on it and go. Oh, well, actually, the plug wires are off. Maybe some other missing parts. Never a good sign. You, you never know with boats. Like, this thing could have a cracked block or whatever. It's I feel like every boat I get has a cracked block. That's the walk around tour. 
Now I've got to get this trim up and pull it out of here somehow. Yeah, nice excess here. I think I left my jump pack in the airboat, but luckily I got some jumper cables. Just juiced her up on here. Let's see if we get lucky and the trim switch just works, you know? Pretty great. I did notice we got some keys sitting here. Only 43 and a half hours on this. You usually don't even need the key to hit the, the trim, but that's not going. Hmm, doesn't feel like it's turning. Yeah, it's just turning the whole cylinder. You get a little lube in there. The pins just get a little sticky over time. There it is. Ooh, start even engaged. Yeah, how about that? Let's see. All right, no, no trim. But you guys heard that starter blip. And we'll just go right down to the trim pump. Left the ground attached. Let's see. Well, that should just be positive in, right? Which one of these is going to be positive? Here we go. All right. Well, solenoid's going, but we got no pump action. Well, the other side should be positive out, right? There we go. Is that going up or down? Oh. Sweet. All right. That's it. Just needs a new solenoid or cleaned out. Boom. All right. Fire up the compressor. And we got a few guys here to help me push this. I was originally going to use the winch cable, but I think, well, Arity's up. Just shove her on out. Of course, since we got the air hose with four fittings on it, we can fill both tires same time. Oh, how convenient is that? the sun shining let's see if we can't get this out on the water today would be the goal uh, i did get a registration for the trailer and the boat he was saying when his father registered it uh, he did not need titles so this trailer manufactured august 31st 1982 in ben salem pennsylvania by load right and it is just perfect condition you know these older trailers are generally just met better quality i feel like the galvanizing uh, was, was better too. Definitely could use some lights, some tires, a little dry route on the sidewall. We've got the bearing buddies. Well, let's just uh, clean this thing out. Got a nice fillet board. I think I'll gift this to my neighbor because uh, he does a lot of fishing. G96 brand, Patterson, New Jersey. How about that? Got these seats that don't seem to belong to this boat, but they're really nice condition. Two of them, probably put them up for sale. Made by Wise down in Greeleyville, South Carolina. We got some flares, three handhelds, and a flare gun. Got a spare trailer hub and bearings. The Plano 5520. Pretty, uh, got some tackle in there. Right. Boat fenders, crab trap, and uh, muffs for running them on the hose. The bullseye funnel, KP Industries, made in USA, Minneapolis. And a wonder mug. Never seen one of these before. No spill, no slide. This, yeah. This would be good for the Torino since there's no cup holders. You can set it right on the middle of the seat and look at that. Surprise Jen with that. 
anchor. I've never seen an anchor like this. That's homemade almost. We got a chart of the Delaware Bay, which somebody purchased for $13.25. And I mean, this is how you boated back in the day. Like you didn't just have all the fancy apps on your phone, went down to the store and picked up like this big old thing. And not that I was boating back in the eighties, but get you a quick reference. Boating guide, a nautical chart for the intercoastal, January, 1984. And I guess this is how those maps came, folded up and signed there. Oh, kind of neat stuff, really. I, mean, I know some of you guys probably don't care about this kind of stuff, but look at those cup holders. Definitely going to have to save them for the airboat. I have some plastic ones that are similar, but these are awesome steel. They'll never break. I mean, they still have plastic mounts, but I could have something up for that. And uh, yeah, just more. You know, 1986 tide table for Avalon. You got uh, nautical charts, symbols, and abbreviations. Got to look all the information up. The porta potty. Oh has fluid in it i mean all of this is telling me that this boat has definitely not been out since the early 90s this is probably the insect repellent that actually works right more beverage mates new in box oh darn no there's okay that's like a tape collection for striping on the outside of the boat how about this one yes check this out oh man one of them brand new in box love it that's going right on the airboat and what else we got here a little little bat for knocking fishes out the fishies a second fire extinguisher i saw one in the back one right here which is in the green too on the gauge and our anchor throwables we got basically all of our safety gear and i'll get this cleared out and then we'll get it running Thirty-year-old turds in here, probably. Just a couple of other cool items I ran into. This monocular. Oh, I just ripped the leather. Well, it's falling apart anyway. Look at that. It's like brand new. Oh, that'll be neat to try out. Do some bird watching. These old ladies flip-flops. Thought about giving them to Jen as a joke, but I don't think she'll take too kindly. Oh yeah, I said plenty of life left in them. And then, for you local guys, uh, Jack's Marine. There you go, the other side. In Croydon, PA, I've always heard of this place. Oh, this is a really old bag, because I know they closed a very long time ago. Uh, yeah, Jack's Marine, how about it? In case you've ever been there. I think I'm gonna hang this on the garage wall. That's, that's a cool logo. 1987, high gear. Sounds like just maybe water for you guys that don't like seeing graphic stuff feel free to fast forward but we gotta see what's in the porta potty i'm sure it's nothing major it's actually a nice little unit it's got the toilet paper on the side pack a potty for sears made by sears How about that oh it's uh i mean she's clean look at this thing it looks like it's never been used oh all right separate the turds Oh, look at that. 1983, this is dated. And it's still got the original Sears pack a potty deodorant. There's the flush device and, all right, yeah, it's just blue water. Maybe been peed in once. That's it, I'll go dump this out and keep it. It's, this is really nice. Again, a fine example of quality built stuff that uh, when stored indoors, the ozone, Hasn't attacked it. Uh, seems when you store things outdoor with the temperature changes, everything rots apart. And I guess maybe more O3 out there. I don't know, but this is in great condition. I'll save it. The reason it was so heavy is the top's full of water. That shall drain out. Well, we got her clean enough. Time to tear into this engine, see what the deal is. I like that this trailer has fenders you can actually step on and they, they don't even flex. You know, some of them, the, the newer ones, they have that feature, but they just weren't built heavy duty enough now this is what i'm talking about we got a ton of space for working on it the bilge area nice and clean and dry no oil drips at all here's a look at the starter solenoid give her a little rock oh, motor mounts super solid that's what's great about storing a boat indoors the old school fram 
Uh, that's a 160 horsepower Mercruiser GM block. And this is probably like a, a truck engine, I guess. And yeah, you got it's got all the plug wires off, but well, plugs are just loose too. And I bet you he just took those out to uh, hose them down with a little fogging oil before storing it. And it does seem like somebody did a new floor at some point on here. Uh, it doesn't look factory OE by any means, but I think they did a nice job. So I'm sure. And a little separation right here, a little, little split. But I mean, you see where the motor mounts go right through. This is not sinking. It's not soft. That's good stuff. The old Roll 750 made in Massachusetts. Let's see what we got on the dipstick. Uh, oof, we're like two inches overfilled on the oil. But we have enough room. I mean, I don't think there'd be any water in this engine. Uh, we have enough room to get to the drain plug to check for that or bring it down to the appropriate level. Fuel pump looks decent. I mean, I say we just lube up the cylinders, fire it up. I mean, you might as well lube before cranking it, right? Because they're already sitting here loose. No problems there. You can see somebody put anti C's on the threads at some point too. A little shot will do you. Let that settle across the pistons and get onto the cylinder walls. We'll disconnect our spark lead off the dizzy and fuel. Disconnect that off the carburetor. And that way I can drop this fuel hose on here and we'll see if the pump pumps anything out of the tank or what comes out. Got an Optima red top sitting over here we can drop in instead of the airboat. And I uh, did see a few comments asking like, hey, why aren't you talking about Optima batteries anymore? Well, at one point they sponsored me and sent me two batteries, which was just awesome. Because uh, I do love Optima batteries, but they cost a lot of money and they never, I don't know, they just don't want to deal with me anymore. I, I never heard back from them. But the ones they sent are still going strong. And I know I saw a lot of comments from you guys saying that the quality has gone way down on these. So I haven't had an issue yet. Maybe I just got lucky or maybe they sent me a better batch. Don't know. Oh, it just came right out of the crimp. Did you guys see that? That was barely in there. How about the other side? Yeah, same difference. We've got a crimper, hammer style, but you know what? I got a hydraulic one that I pretty much never use. Somewhere, I saw it the other day when I was organizing. There you go. Turn out the hydraulic crimper. I got for like one job and yeah. I mean, instead of hammering away. Cut a little insulation back too. Nothing like some hydraulic force. That does a really nice job, actually. I mean, I don't know if I picked the right size, but that's nice. Would be nice if this handle had a spring action on it. You gotta keep pushing it back out. I'm sure the higher end ones do. Uh, by the way, this is just a, a no name I got on Amazon. I'll, I'll drop a link to these down below because I think this is a tool that's well worth the investment. I would say just go with whichever one's on sale because they're probably all the same. This is F. DS factory direct sale brand, uh, but let's see how long it lasts. I don't know, I haven't used it too much, but it does a really nice job. Yeah, we're juiced with good connections. Look at that old school blower, steel case motor, aluminum housing. You see right behind our battery, this is the bilge hose. Oh, that plastic broke off. That, uh, that wouldn't do us much good. Now, on this, um, trim pump i only see one solenoid and like i'm used to seeing two solenoids because one for going up one for going down we already know this is our up and let's see and now it works now imagine that just needed a little little tlc a little tap solenoid's good but how do we go down we got three wires coming off the motor one's going over to here and this is obviously ground and then the, that's the positive one that we just, you know, that goes up. Oh, the other one's just going to this little plastic block. I don't, I don't know how it gets 
But that must be, if we send power, that's got to be down, right? Yeah. And we'll drop that down because, you know, you don't want to go starting these engines with the trim all the way up. Not good for the U-joint in the back. And before the crank over, like always, let's just see what's on the bottom of this drive. Because if there's water down there, I doubt there is. But but if so, we we don't want to... Uh, well, that came off really easy. I was all prepared to have to start hammering on it and such. Uh, but we don't want to turn that water all up and, and get it milky. I'm get, um, guessing it's probably going to be low because you see the oil residue all over this. But let's find out here. Oh, no, just black oil. Oh, that's a good sign. Actually, it's not even that black. It's bluish. That's a good sign. Because most marine gear oils are uh, blue, have a blue tint to them. Uh, maybe it was just changed before it was stored. Let's see, we got on a level. Oh, nothing so far. Yeah, and we're low. And top that off. Don't have any marine gear oil, but I do have gear oil. I overfilled it just a touch, so I'll drain that out because I think it's important to leave that airspace up here for expansion. Otherwise, you probably end up blowing seals out. You know, you got to have an area for the air to pressurize when it warms up. The newer versions that have the hose into the engine compartment with the bottle, that's a much better system, I feel like. But these work fine as long as they're sealed. Luckily, the trim hoses and cylinders look to be in great condition, no leaks. And something I regret would have done differently is before putting these down, probably should have like wiped all the dust and crud off of them because uh, that could go ahead and damage the seals in there. I'm going to throw our muffs on. Uh, that way when we crank this over, in case that water pump still has any life in it, we don't shred it. And yes, I know we should just be putting a water pump in it all together, but I like to test things and see if they still have life beforehand. You know, as long as we're getting water flow and it's working, then it's going to be okay for now. A little bit of lube down the carb. We got the plug holes covered up. Let's give her a crank and let it build up a little oil pressure. All right, that sounded good. I think my battery's not in great condition. I think. Oh, that's funny. Just telling you guys how great Optimas are. <laughs> Apparently, this one needs a charge. We just took it off the airboat last night. Uh, haven't had her out in probably a month, so yeah, that's okay though, because it gives me an opportunity to try out this old school charger. I mean, this is like an oldie but a goodie, right? It was made by Big Four in Mainville, Ohio. 60 DC amps. Let's see what kind of juice. I hear a good buzzing. Oh yeah! <laughs> you hear the heavy buzz, and the gauge jumped up to 20 amps. It set our timer. Oh, we can even bump it up to, I went up to like 30 and even more. You know, the old transformer style ones. I mean, it's just built for life. And with the cranking we have done, no gas yet. I think we'll pour some in the tank. Oh. Oops, that was flowing a little too fast for the vent. Oh yeah, definitely bone dry in there. I can hear it. That's enough to find out if the pump's any good. And yes, with that little bit of cranking, pump did pull prime. That's what came out. It smells like varnish, turpentine, whatever. It's nasty, but uh, that's a good sign. I don't see bits of rubber pieces in there and such. Get some of this junk out of here. And now that we've pumped oil through the engine, uh, I want to recheck the oil level too. And we'll check for spark, right? I'm just jumping all over the place, guys. Oh, this uh, makes for a nice little seat. Vibrates your butt. Oh, or not. Uh, there's a fan in there. <laughs> you dummy. I feel like I'm not the per first person to sit on that either because this is broken and it's kind of concaved in a little bit. Let's see if we're getting any spark off of this coil. Oh yeah, nice strong spark. No need to clean the points. You know, there's no corrosion anywhere as you guys can see. I mean, when it sits outside with all those temperature changes, everything sweats and corrosion. Oh, we throw the plugs in now. 
Yeah, and I'm feeling excited because I think it's kind of just purr like a kitten, you know? That carburetor, yeah, it might be gunked up, but I have a feeling that he uh, maybe even drained that. I mean, it seems this guy really did take care of his, his boat. After cranking over and then sitting, the oil's still over a little bit, maybe like an inch or so, but then again, we are on a hill on this driveway, so I'll get the dipstick on the back. I think we'll just leave it right there, check it in the water, if we ever make it there. Oh, got the fuel hooked up, just made this line. Actually, I gotta tighten that down. Yeah, that way we can run this on the auxiliary. I'm gonna open this and listen. Open the, the valve, that is. Okay. Yep, I hear it flowing. Let's see if it shuts off. Usually, you know, give it a tap. I'm tapping on one of the steel screws. And it seems that needle in seat is sealing. I'm gonna take the throttle linkage off. Key on, clear prop. Let's see if she fires off. Yeah! I think the spork might be cutting off as soon as the starter cuts out. Let's hot wire the coil. That's what it was. It was getting 12 volts when it's cranking, but not getting 12 volts. block is full of water because as soon as I took this hose off you know it's gurgling out of there some I guess let's drain it off the side too and see what comes out um, but no flow probably just the water pump so so dry and hard or blockage uh, it's a perfect example of why you don't go wasting your time messing with carbs before you try running it as in this case she seems to be purring yep, I'm gonna drain out what's in there and you know, we ran it for a, a short period of time so with that water. Heck, I could put my hand in it. Like, it's not even, all right, it's a little hot, but we didn't overheat her. Now, if you run it dry with no water at all, you you could overheat it. Wow, that's uh, interesting looking. And it does have a build drain, but I'm kind of thinking maybe I should have caught that with something. It seems to be going this way. And actually, this uh, kind of smells like antifreeze a little bit. Hopefully an RV antifreeze, but I don't know if it is. So we, uh, yeah, we'll tilt this up, dump out, dump it out the back, and capture that. That's just a fine example of the care that this man went through before storing his boat. And you know, if it is regular antifreeze, it's good that we're draining it now instead of letting that dump right into the river. The next item on my list is going to be hitting this with the pressure washer and some soap while the sun is still out. And then I uh, suppose we'll get water pump on order, maybe a couple other things. When I hit this with some of the uh, spray, uh, glue spray. Let that tack up, push this on. Let's probably brush off all this too. I mean, talk about a fire hazard and that's gonna suck right into the intake. But we don't wanna strip all of the insulation because then you know, it's so loud. We'll just vacuum it is what we'll do. Not that that powdered foam being sucked into the engine would ever damage anything. Maybe lead to like gummy valve stems or something, you know?
Yep, looking like a short boat. Uh, could definitely hit that with a buffer, but uh, I'm excited. I'm gonna get those parts on order and I will see you soon. The next afternoon, cross my fingers that pump comes today since it is the last nice day. I think it's supposed to rain all weekend, but I did get the throttle working. You press this button, you do throttle only. At first that cable was a little tight, but when you bring it back, the button comes out. I can't seem to get it to go into gear without like forcing it. I mean, if I'm forcing it still, it doesn't really move. I can see the cables budging a little bit though, so I'm gonna get some some lube on that and then uh, some, some lube down on the drive too. We'll see if we can get that working. Not gonna worry about the trim for now since we can do that with just uh, a couple wires. But I did notice this old placard, Caravel Boats, Coyote, California. I'm sure this one was made in Arkansas though. So this is the hose that pumps water into the engine and pretty rare, but I have seen uh, the, the line get corroded or blocked back here. So I'm also gonna pop that off and see what the scoop is and then you guys remember it was shutting off um, unless I applied power to the, the coil well check it out tan wire and over here on the resistor wire came off it's just kind of sitting there so. got that wire corrected and nothing now my mistake we do have a light it's just so dim and this is a regular bulb in here I, I couldn't see it at first so resistors doing its job limiting the current going to the coil so it doesn't burn up. I took this hose off down at the copper fitting. No blockages in the hose, but still can't blow through there. Didn't see any corrosion. However, I took the air gun, popped it through, heard a little pop, and it's passing air now. You can see like some corrosion chunky stuff came out down here. I'm hoping maybe the aluminum was just corroded shut in there. Let's try to hook the water up and see if it's flowing. <laughs> Yeah, look at that. It was just a, a blockage in the hose. We got, well, we got water flow, not a ton of pressure. No, probably still a worn out pump, but that's, that's actually probably enough to go run it. Fill gauge seems to work. That's where five gallons brought us. Discharging, good oil pressure, 30 PSI at idle. Temp, we'll see if that comes up. Tachometer is working. Look at that, that talk too. That thing is cool. You can see lots of nasty old rusty water coming out. And I cannot believe how quiet this engine is. Like I'm used to a, a V8. It almost sounds like there's mufflers. The engine's a little bit noisy. It sounds like maybe the water pumps or alternators make, uh, bearings make a little bit of noise. Uh, or maybe the gimbal bearing. See that water temp has come up into the green. I thought these Merc Cruisers had a grease zerk for a lube in the gimbal bearing, but I don't see one on this. Maybe the older ones didn't have it. I mean, I just hit uh, one, two, three, four of the pivots. And I mean, I assume this is for the top pivot, right? Hmm, I don't know. Well, there's a big, big bearing in there. And uh, it sounds like this one might be slightly noisy. The steering was a little tight at first, but after running it back and forth, feeling pretty good. Uh, I did get it to go in the gear a few times, but having some issues with the kill switches. Um, if I start to go in, it's clicking up oh, and then it shuts off. All right, never mind. I took it off of here, and actually, that switch is working just fine. And with the lower shift cable off, I think it's definitely just the cable because it's super tight. So, the quick fix for that is this I usually use this hose, put some oil in there, apply pressure. We get a little bit of lube shot down in there. To loosen the set screws. We can pop this off the cable. Yeah, I can already see in there. It's dry. I poured some Marvel Mystery Oil mixed with ATF in here. Tilt the hose up, and the safe bet is to use an air pump or turn your air compressor way down. But if you're dumb like me, then just give it a little shot. Head for cover in case it blows off. Okay, it's got pressure. I'll let that sit and get some lube down there and then hopefully work the cable. That's actually 150 PSI in there. I'm surprised the hose is not blowing off. I actually held that pressure the whole time. Well, a little while later and a bunch of this, I actually got it moving pretty good. I mean, a smart move would be to take the cable off down there and that way we can work it back and forth and get the lube all the way down. Or the smarter thing is just replace it. Well, you know, 
think we got her good enough. I don't really hear the interrupt switch going, but it's midday and I think it's test drive time. So we'll wrap this up and I know some of you guys are screaming, do an oil change first. What is wrong with you? Listen, that old oil in there that's crystal clear is totally fine. If there was water in it or something, that would be another story. But uh, I was just talking to my buddy who he's been trying to get into a boat for a couple years now, you know, a cheap boat. And I sent him a picture. He came by, looked at it. He's kind of into it, so we're going to take him out for the first test drive. Uh, hopefully things go smooth and I can get him into this boat for dirt cheap. I suppose we could bring the Goose Man too, but you know, I don't really like to bring him out on the... Uh, yeah, excursions like this because you're not a great swimmer, are you, Gus? Come on, bubs. We gotta get you outside, get some exercise. If you're gonna be staying home, though. Can't let you sleep all day. Get some exercise. Hit these bearing buddies with a little grease. Oh, well, it didn't even pump the spring up yet. That's good enough. Get a little pressure in there. You don't want to pump them up too hard, otherwise they'll blow the seal out on the back. And in the boat, look at this. Has new bearing buddy caps, which had cardboard in there to prevent them. Oh, these are the good ones. I should I keep these because you know you buy the the junky ones on Amazon and they just fall apart. Look at that. That is good quality. Uh, some of the, the overseas rubber that you use in, in plastic just falls apart after like a year or two of ozone attacks, it, I guess. But these are still super pliable after all those years. Trying out this spill-free mug. It's pretty sweet. Uh, works well on the Tundra. You know, it's gonna be good for the Torino, but right on top of my CB radio, it just kind of sits there. It's fine. You put it up here on the curvature. Look at that. It's still not spilling. Amazing. Works well. Since it's tapered, if it swings, ooh, yeah, it's more likely to want to kind of just rock it water or coffee out. Mm, I see the problem with that. Oh, look at that. The docks are still in. High tide. Mid-October. I'm surprised they're still in. And there we go. She's looking good in the water. We got our potential buyer, Keegan. Oh, not taking on any water. And... Yeah, we grabbed some basic tools. You can see this was in the carport for a while and got mud daubers all over it, my tool bag. Uh, unfortunately, I hear a little trickle down here and yep, you see back there taking on some water through the gimbal housing. So, you know, need a new bearing, need to be resealed. This is again, just, just from me, uh, from before, from draining the block. The Coast Guard is Pulling out. Yeah, they were hanging out. For... In, I think. Oh, okay. They just put a new buoy in there over there. How about that? Yeah. Yes. Let's see what she does under load. time of year these guys come out with their bass boats when there's no other boats out you know otherwise they get they get swamped but man this thing pulled out of the hole I mean we're trim all the way down right now because that switch is not working but that pulled out quick well, I don't think it's really getting a ton of water flow but we do have a working gauge it's not overheating so we'll run it a little bit a little bit more oh it just dropped I see that yeah, yep. that it's on Yeah, we did have a working gauge. I just saw it go up yeah. like, yeah, it was, it was in the green. I don't know. Before we go further, we wanted to get the temp gauge working because it was intermittent and determine it is a wiring issue between this green. Could really just be that crimp connection. Uh, 
and up there because anyway we're gonna just hot wire it off the sensor and yeah we're in the, the green we're on the high end of the green now let's turn our hummingbird on it's doing the self-test we are at 17 feet right now i can't believe that works so well it fires up instantly too way faster than my, my garmin ever did yeah this depth finder definitely accurate 50 foot out in this channel uh, sitting here idling we're creeping into the red so when we're when we're riding we're staying in the green but sitting there idling i don't think it's pumping enough water when you take this hose off it should be shooting like a garden hose yeah Test drive went A-OK. -okay. Yes, we still need that impeller in there to get some more water flow and the gimbal bearing should be replaced along with the bellows and such. A couple wiring doodads to fix up, but uh, yeah, Keegan said he's gonna take it. So $10,000, right? Yeah, maybe right. 11. Yeah. Proud new owner of the 1970 something Caravel. I didn't even look at the registration to see what year it was. It doesn't say it on the placard. It's gotta be like late seventies or something. Oh yeah, the water leak in the back too. But, you know, it's a good boat, great foundation. It's gonna be his first ever. Uh, he actually bought a pair of jet skis many years ago off a guy and had like nothing but problems with him. I think they were like 2,500 bucks sitting down there on River Road, he got them and then they both were nothing but problems and that was like his first boating experience. So I'm, I'm hoping this one, many years later, he's getting back in a boat and I'm hoping this will be a better experience. Of course, uh, I'll be able to help him out with it too and such. I was glad to see it going to a good home. Somebody who's gonna appreciate it, enjoy it, use it. That's what it's all about, you know? I got the airboat, that's a fun one. Can't keep, you don't need 10 boats though, you know? And no, he didn't buy it for $10,000. I gave it to him for the price of what this trailer would cost. And at the end of the day, always happy to pass a good deal on to somebody though. I mean, the, the boat does need a lot of work, is the truth of it. So if he wasn't getting it for a, a good price, then it wouldn't make any sense. He was asking if everything came with the boat. This is the one piece that doesn't. Made in Japan, little telescoping monocular. I don't know if it works that well, but. Oh, that's pretty decent. Yeah, I can I can read his Nissan badge from here. You can read read the letters on it. It's a 25 by 30 millimeter Tasco. And part of the deal is that he's able to store it over at my little yard here for at least a month. And uh, he's gonna pop back over later, drop this lower. I'll probably come back too so we can see what that impeller looks like. I would imagine it's all chewed up or just really stiff. And identify what this is, because I'm pretty sure it's pre-alpha, alpha one, gen one. Those came out in like the 80s, right? And that way we can get the right parts for the the gimbal bearing and such. See, I gotta rearrange here to get more packed in, but yeah, it'll be cool. It'll be a great uh, learning experience for him working on these out drives and such too, and uh, getting familiar with the, the boat life. So back over here, he's got the lower off and I wanted to show you guys what everything looked like. This is the lower pump housing. You can see that overing was completely shot and good way for water to end up getting down in there. He tucked this in, gonna get the rest of that all cleaned up. And then this is what the impeller looked like. You know, not horrible, but uh, when they get older, this one's not falling apart yet. Uh, it just stays in that position. And it's not pliable. I suppose that's what makes it not able to flow. You see a little bit of you know dry rot on those two and definitely some wear on the tanks. It's amazing these kits come with everything you need. It's only like 30 bucks on Amazon. I don't, it's almost too good to be true, you know? Brand new housing with stainless sleeve. Here's a glance at the impeller. Get this back together and see if that takes care of the water flow. This would be a good idea to pop the thermostat housing off real quick, see what that looks like. Well, most often now there's not even a thermostat in these, but they, they do come with one. It does have a thermostat, how about that? 
but it's uh, kind of kind of beat. Should be a spring too, though. There it is. Boom. And you can see there was a strap right here that used to go down around the spring on the bottom, and that just corroded off. And get a new one of those, leave it out for now, and I'll throw the stainless steel spring in my spring collection. All right, to put a cap on this one, Keegan has drained the block and winterized the boat. He's gonna get back on it in the springtime, taking care of that gimbal bearing and the water leak in the back. Let's think about that bearing, it's probably just got a little bit of pitting on the, on the chrome from sitting over the time, maybe a little bit of moisture down in there, and that's why it's getting real noisy, but better to take care of it before it grenades and then takes out something else, like the outdrive. Hopefully it is just the gimbal bearing and not something in the stern drive, but I'll try to bring you guys along when he decides to take on that project. Probably something on the second channel. I originally planned to get a Fury update video out this week, but uh, kind of been a little under the weather. Excuse my, my voice, still getting over a slight cold. And future videos coming on those two other vehicles you saw sitting in that warehouse. Might be second channel stuff. I'm not sure it didn't tear into them yet. So all that being said, I wanna thank you very, very much for tuning into the video. And Jen and I also wanna say a special thanks to you guys that have jumped on nononsensenowhow.com and picked up the 2023 Christmas ornaments we're making out of the old NNKH, mostly roof, tongue and groove wood. I think it's pine wood. We debuted those in the live stream on the second channel the other day. I'll drop a link to them down below in case you didn't see them. Uh, again, just thank you very much for all the support, merch, everything you guys do for us. And we hope to see you in another video very soon. Uh, I did say in the live stream that Jen had a video coming out this week. She plans to post Monday, doing a break job on her friend's car. So, see you guys, and thank you. Is that Lisa? Gus, is that Lisa? Tell Lisa to say hi. This one's gonna go to Gus and say hi. Hi, Gus. Is that Lisa? And Tucker? Like better than being in a jacuzzi. Therapy right there. Pull some rebar out of the scrap bin and just hammer in one piece in front of each one to try to prevent them from sliding forward. Yeah, that came out pretty sweet. Ran the plate tamper over this too. So firmed up real good, swept some sand in. Good to go. Yeah. 